So what are the strongest guns to put on the top of your Lehman Rust battle tanks now? Let's weigh up vanquishers and punishers, demolishers and battle cannons, with a look at how powerful they are for Codex Astra Militarum. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're looking into perhaps one of the things I was most interested in in the new guard book, new stats for all the Lehman Rust turret weapons, and seeing which ones are going to be the most dangerous in the new codex. In this video we'll talk through the stats for each one of them, talk through the few that maybe missed the mark by a bit, and then weigh up the strongest ones against a bunch of targets, talking about which ones look like they're going to be best in a take or commons setting. So first up, here we have the profile for the Lehman Rust in Codex Astra Militarum. It's a heavy support choice at 155 points base, and I'd say that they are looking pretty efficient in the new codex, mainly through gaining a whole ton of firepower on the turret weapons, which now give you a plus one to hit, hitting on threes rather than hitting on fours is just so much better. They also gained an extra wound and the sponsons are cheaper as well, it does look like it's a good time for Rosses. Today though, we're interested in the big guns on top, and we have the choice of seven different ones. Starting out, we've got the trusty battle cannon, which seems like a really solid all-rounder, D6 plus 3 shots, strength 8, AP minus 2, and damage 3 now. An average of 6 or 7 shots there, and getting a big damage 3 makes it so much better in 9th edition. Far more useful for killing things like heavy infantry or dealing meaningful damage to vehicles. Damage D3 was just a bit sad before, I thought. The Demolisher is now only D6 shots, but it's now strength 10, AP minus 3, and damage D3 plus 3. It's become far more focused as something that you really want to be targeting with the heaviest things, rather than just general purpose and flat out better than the Battle Cannon in all situations. I feel like that's a bit better to be honest. Previously Demolishers were just a bit auto-include, so good to see a bit more balance. The Punisher Gatling Cannon is 20 shots at strength 6, AP minus 1, and damage 1. You are going to be averaging far less hits than this, but with a pip of AP and an extra pip of strength they should hit a bit harder. Maybe a little bit unfortunate against Armour of Contempt damage though. The Eradicator Nova Cannon is D3 plus 6 shots, strength 6, AP minus 2, damage 2, and ignores light cover. More shots and ignores cover, but losing strength and damage compared with the Battle Cannon is just really not great. The Execution of Plasma Cannon is D6 plus 3 shots, same as the Battle Cannon, and when it's overcharged it's basically an upgraded version of the Battle Cannon, strength 8, AP minus 4, and damage 3. It does give you the chance of mortal wounds though, and is only 36 inch range, so it does have its downsides. It's quite nice that you don't have to overcharge if you just want damage 2 now though, strength 7 and damage 2 is still pretty nice with that high AP. The Exterminator Auto Cannon is 6 shots at strength 8, AP minus 2, and damage 2. Also, not great in my opinion, and we'll say why in a second. And then the big intimidating one is the Vanquisher Cannon, heavy 1, strength 14, AP minus 5, damage D3 plus 6, ignores invuls, and if it wounds the target, then the target suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to normal damage, giving it a little bit more threat against infantry, so you potentially might be killing 2 or 3 models rather than just 1. Overall, lots of big numbers. Hitting on a 3 plus and not getting locked up in melee will be really big advantages for Ross turret shooting, but out of all of these scary guns, which ones are looking best? When answering that question, I thought it might make sense to start with the guns that I feel like are obviously just a little bit on the underpowered side, and while they're not really unusable, they're not enormously behind the other variants, I feel like you're almost always going to be better off either with a standard battle cannon or a non-overcharged executioner, even against the targets that they should be best against. First up, we've got the Eradicator Nova Cannon, which does have a bit of a niche, but it's just such a specific niche that I think you'd rarely ever want it compared with a more general purpose gun that's going to be a lot more effective against other armies. You average 8 shots with that 6 plus D3, compared with a Battle Cannon that averages you 6 or 7. So it does have a small shot advantage, but then the other benefits are ignores cover versus the Battle Cannon's Strength 8, Damage 3, and far better range. This thing is going to have a slight edge against light infantry, though still they aren't exactly what you'd call optimal targets for that kind of gun. It looks like to get the most mileage out of it, you'd want to be firing at something like Armour of Contempt Space Marines in cover, where if you do that, then it kills 1.7 of them, compared with the Battle Cannon's average of 1.2 so it is solidly better, at least by that comparison. It is interesting though that even in this fairly optimal setup, it's still behind a non-overcharged Executioner Plasma Cannon, and that doesn't look very good for it when it's beaten by the Executioner when it's not even really trying. Otherwise though, against Marines not in cover, the Eradicator and the Standard Rust with the Battle Cannon are fairly even, but I think that the Eradicator just really gets let down whenever you might want to target something that's just a little bit tougher, say for example a Toughness 7 vehicle 
the Eradicator will be less than half as good as the Battle Cannon. You average 2.3 wounds on one, whereas the Battle Cannon averages you a big 5.8. I feel that for the Eradicator, if you knew for 100% that you'd only be fighting against infantry and cover will be very relevant, then it might not be the worst choice, but in a take all commas setting it's just really underpowered and pretty inflexible, and the Battle Cannon is just so much better. I feel like to really compete it could have done with maybe an extra 2 or 3 shots, or maybe an extra pip of AP to give it a bit more of a niche. I think if you'd done either of those two things that might have been a genuinely credible option, but otherwise not so much. Otherwise, the other one that's perhaps even more obviously underpowered is the Exterminator Autocannon. They've really been quite bad all the way through 8th edition, so I did wonder whether they might actually make a bit of an effort to make them better. And while they have got better stat line improvements with extra AP and extra strength, for some reason it's still just pretty much directly inferior to the Battle Cannon. The Auto Cannons are 6 shots at strength 8, AP minus 2, and damage 2. The Battle Cannon averages you 6.5 shots, and that's at damage 3. The plus 1 damage is absolutely huge. Plus, getting an average of more shots and better range just means that the Exterminator Auto Cannon really is directly inferior. I guess the only theoretical advantages are that you could fire with this into com things in combat with your own tank if you wanted to, and it's also a little bit less swingy, but it does mean that against big targets with lots of models in them, you can't make use of the blast rules. Not sure why they made this one so underpowered. I think you could have given it 8 shots, and even then, I think it would be suboptimal and a bit underwhelming. Maybe it needs something like 10 shots to be one of the better variants. So with perhaps the worst two in my opinion out the way, let's move on. Next up we have the Lehman Ross Punisher, which I'd say just maybe doesn't fit in comparing with the others quite as much, as it's just trying to do a very different job, trying to mow down light infantry, as opposed to stack hurt on heavy infantry or vehicles. Obviously, with a whole stack of damage one attacks, the Punisher is by far the best against one wound infantry. If you want a Rust to deal with horde troops, then this is it. It could be quite nice with the Born Soldier's auto wounds on sixes, and that would help us out against high toughness a bit. It also would like the plus four inch range as well. Damage wise, you'd expect something like nine dead guardsmen, six dead Necron warriors before reanimation, three wounds done to space marines, which is already a bit subpar for the amount of expensive tank that you've got here and a bit dismal against the heavy targets, only about 2 wounds to toughness 7 or 8 vehicles, even with all those shots. I think really the question for whether or not you want Lehman Rust Punishers is, do you need the anti-infantry niche covering this badly in a guard codex? I would in general say probably not. Guard lists just tend to have a fair bit of anti-infantry firepower just going alongside all their main guns, things like sponsons on tanks, which are very cheap now, a bunch of random las guns, and extra anti-infantry guns that are on transports getting infantry to the front, Never mind other dedicated damage dealers that can deal with infantry quite nicely, things like the new Rough Riders, Kazakin, or perhaps more to heavy weapon teams with orders. I feel like in general, if you want a frontline damage dealer that's got fairly short range, it needs to be pretty take all comers, and can deal hefty damage to whatever it can get its range on, and the Punisher just doesn't really seem to fit the bill that much. I really don't think it's unusable though, maybe you could have one as a dedicated anti-horde piece in your army, and play it a bit differently depending on what you're matching up against, and obviously if we start to see loads of hordes in the meta, they'll be a lot more tempting. Overall, I'd rate it as not one of the strongest though for those reasons, just as guard as a codex tend to be okay at dealing with infantry quite well, and generally want their battle tanks to be taking chunks out of the enemy heavies. Let me know what you think of the Punisher down in the comments though. It's still a very fun variant that you get to throw a whole ton of dice with. Gatling cannons in the first place win a whole load of rule of call cool points. So moving on and actually looking at some big numbers against various different targets, here are a few breakdowns for some of the best Rosses against a lot of common targets in the game. On the left we've got Guardsmen, Space Marines and Terminators, and on the right we've got Vehicles, a Toughness 7 one, and then a couple of hard targets, a Toughness 8 one with a 5 plus Imbal and minus 1 damage like a Plague Burst Crawler, or a Toughness 8 one with a 2 plus save and Armour of Contempt, say a Botan Land Fortress, or an enemy Lehman Ross at the moment, presuming they do keep Armour of Contempt in the next balanced data slate. Against Light Infantry, obviously the Punisher wins out big time, the Eradicator is next, but to be honest not by all that much, and it's still not enormously efficient against Hordes, the Battle Cannon and the Executioner really aren't all that far behind. Then moving up against Space Marines with Armour of Contempt, the Executioner is by far the best here, AP-4 and flat damage does some great work, and it's interesting that it remains fairly solidly the best, even if you don't overcharge. Otherwise against Space Marines, really quite a lot of them are fairly even, the Battle Cannon and Eradicator are next best, but then they're followed up by the Vanquisher, Exterminator, Punisher and Demolisher in that order, without a huge amount of damage disparity between them. Kind of interesting that the Vanquisher's actually still pretty good against these, the Mortal Wounds do help out a bit. Moving on to take aim at some heavier targets, 
against Terminators, the Executioner again wins by a big way, this time you do have to overcharge though, and then it's the Vanquisher and the Demolisher tied in second place, followed up by the Battle Cannon. Then moving on against Vehicles, the Executioner again wins against the standard Toughness 7-1 without an inball save, followed up this time by the Demolisher, where the big D3 plus 3 damage comes into effect. The Battle Cannon and the Vanquisher are a little bit behind them. The Vanquisher averages 5.5 wounds here, though in general it's going to be around about 10 wounds or 0, super swingy. If you do introduce an inball save into the mix, then the Vanquisher would go up significantly. The Executioner does rely on that AP-4 to be a bit ahead of some of the rest. Then moving on to look at the hard targets, the Demolisher wins by a little bit against the one with toughness 8 and a 5 plus inball and minus 1 damage, though it's basically on a par with the Vanquisher. To be honest, that's exactly the sort of target you'd expect the Vanquisher to be best at, busting through inball saves for a really big punch. And then against the high save one like the Votan Land Fortress, it's the Executioner that takes the prize on this one with the high AP winning, but really isn't very far ahead of the Demolisher and Vanquisher. The Battle Cannon really is quite low against that one, the low AP doing it no favours. Overall against these targets, I think it is kind of notable how well the Executioner does. It's on every single one of the lists, and particularly does well against medium infantry and vehicles without inball saves, being no slouch against heavy targets either. Otherwise the Battle Cannon's another really solid all-rounder, it's kind of interesting that it's pretty close to the Vanquisher in terms of stats against most targets, kind of weird how one big shot with mortal wounds can average you a similar sort of damage output, though obviously it's a lot more swingy. The Demolisher is pretty solid as well, though it gets really quite bad against things that are Space Marine size or worse, due to having fewer shots. So in terms of comparison for me, I think you could certainly make a good argument for saying that the Executioner is now the best Lehman Russ turret. The Mighty Plasma Cannon is not going to be irrelevant against virtually any targets. High AP, decent damage, and a high number of shots is really quite a good combo. It's particularly nice with things like Armor of Contempt about, particularly things like Terminators. Obviously though, the big downside to the Executioner is that if you're overcharging, you're going to be starting to do mortal wounds to yourself. You take one mortal wound for every roll of a one. So roughly on average, each time that you fire it, you should probably expect to take one mortal wound if you're overcharging, which equates to roughly around about 12 points worth of your own tank killed each time you fire. How big of a deal that you think this is really does depend though. If you're going for purely amount of the enemy killed more than you, then it could actually technically knock it off the top spot against that last target with the toughness 8 and the 2 plus save though it would still remain best against the Toughness 7 vehicle and the Terminators and Space Marines. I would bear in mind as well that, say, having a bit of chip damage on, say, three or four different tanks isn't really quite as bad as having it all focused on one tank. If you've got an Executioner that's maybe taken a couple of mortal wounds over the course of the game but the opponent still hasn't been able to deal with, it's not actually really going to matter all that much at all. It might just come into effect more on any ones that they are targeting, and it might just make them just that little bit easier to finish off. I would bear in mind that there are some fairly easy ways to mitigate it, though, you don't always have to overcharge to start with. Against the Space Marines, it actually only gives you a little bit of extra damage, wounding on twos rather than threes. And against infantry, you're really not going to need to at all. As well as that, you can get rerolls. There's the order that lets you reroll ones to hit. That would prevent the vast majority of this damage being suffered. And even if you just took the custom regiment with a single hit reroll, that means that you can always just save it for rerolling a one on the main cannon. In theory, that should give you a very good chance of preventing one mortal wound to your own tank each time it shoots. Overall, I do feel that the Executioner is really quite hard to beat as an all-rounder damage dealer to have on the front line taking and receiving blows. It tears chunks out of everything from light infantry to the heaviest vehicles alike. Its range isn't terrible at 36 inches, and there's a couple of really quite easy ways to mitigate that overcharge damage. Otherwise, though, these last three turrets I think are all very viable as well. The Battle Cannon, I feel, is going to be competing fairly directly with the Executioner Plasma Cannon. The profiles are very similar. The Battle Cannon, compared with the Overcharged Executioner one, is basically the same thing, but 2 AP worse, but much longer range and no mortal wound problems. If you want a bit more of a long-range tank that can lurk in your own deployment zone and take pot shots across the whole board, the Battle Cannon will be absolutely fine with that. Being able to completely outrange the opponent really is a good thing. Against a lot of targets with high inball saves as well, it'll be pretty much equivalent to the Execution of Plasma Cannon. It's only against things with great saves and armour of contempt that the Battle Cannon is going to come up short. I did think it would be remiss not to mention Gatekeeper as well while we're doing this turret comparison. That's the Tank Commander Relic that you can buy in for a CP. It's a Relic Battle Cannon that's D3 plus 6 shots, Strength 9, AP 3 and Damage 3. 
This thing does seem pretty superior to virtually all other choices, to be honest. An average of 8 shots means that it's better against infantry than the majority of them. Strength 9, AP-3, and damage 3 is just going to be something that nothing really wants to get hit with, and it combines that with absolutely great range, so you can have your tank commander lurking in the backfield quite safely. If you take your tank commander, I think that this is easily worth the 1 command point upgrade. If we'd entered Gatekeeper in the previous categories, I believe it would have been best or equal best in just about every category bar the lightest infantry. Next up, we've got the Trusty Demolisher. D6 shots, but a big D3 plus 3 damage, and at least in terms of raw numbers, it is one of the strongest against just about everything with 3 wounds or more, particularly against heavy vehicles where it often wins out and is best. It doesn't feel like quite as much for an auto-include as it was before though, maybe one that you want if you know that you've got a Ross that's going to be trundling forward into the middle of the field and playing a bit more aggressive, that way the range won't matter quite as much. I think it's one that combos very nicely with the extra 4 inch range and the single hit reroll regiment, and if you're using those sort of things, it could combo quite well with multi melter sponsons as well, that way if you're moving to get the demolisher turret in range, you'll also back it up with a bunch of high power melter shots too. Perhaps the biggest weakness is that it's just very swingy, d6 shots could really let you down if you roll low, I guess any ones for the number of shots though could be quite a tempting target for command point rerolls, that would convert into a fair amount more damage. Finally we've got the enormous and scary Vanquisher, it's kind of in an interesting place this one. A turret with literally a single shot is super swingy obviously, either you get the wound through or you don't, but it would be seriously spooky if the enemy had any big threats that they wanted to keep safe, as they know that they're potentially just one roll away from having 10 wounds taken out of the thing. Again, out of any of them this one's going to be amazing with the single hit reroll thing, it gives you effectively 33% extra damage, and if we'd included that in the previous damage comparison, it would have boosted its numbers against the Executioner and the Demolisher quite a lot against the vehicles. Currently, at least in terms of average numbers, it tends to be good but not outright superior against even the toughest targets, but the ability to ignore imbals and just basically remove your opponent's chance to make any difference to whether their model lives or dies is really big, and while it's bad against light infantry, it's actually surprisingly okay numbers-wise against space marines and terminators, just due to the extra mortal wounds that you get when you get a wound roll. It is also kind of interesting that, say, if you whiff the wound roll of one or two against a vehicle, then getting to spend 1 CP to average a return of something like 6 to 8 damage. That's going to be one of the most efficient ways that you can spend a command reroll in 40k, and you could see that as another stealth positive of the tank maybe. Definitely interesting, I think that we will get people using them, but I think it will have games when it really struggles, anything that turns off rerolls won't be appreciated, nor will things like transhuman physiology or ignore your first failed save, both of which a lot of armies have access to. So finishing up, here's my very rough assessment of the Ross turrets currently, I feel like maybe my favourites are the Executioner and Gatekeeper, and maybe the Vanquisher too if you've got that single reroll regiment on the go, and you've got a bit more reliability with the thing hitting. I think that the Demolisher and the Battle Cannon are also very competitive choices, definitely nothing wrong with choosing those either. The Punisher maybe feels a little bit more niche in its anti-infantry focus, and something that the Guard do very well already outside of Lehman Rosses, and I feel like the poor Eradicators and Exterminators have got another codex where they're not very well balanced, and could have both got a fair few more shots on their profile to make them compete. Let me know your own takes though, which of these are you most looking forward to using in 9th edition 40k, and leading your tank companies into battle with. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, I'll certainly be keeping the regular guard videos coming, I have made a full review of the codex as well, feel free to check that out, links down in the video description. I'll certainly be looking forward to making plenty of unit reviews over the coming week or so. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, again that link's down in the video description below. Making all the videos does take a whole load of time and effort, so if you are enjoying a lot, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you just like to help support, the link is down in the video description as well. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.